Well, folks, if you have a Bible with you, if you want to reach for a pew Bible, we're, we're in the Gospel of John. And if you're visiting with us or tuning in uh, online for the first time, we've been working our way through the Gospel of John since the beginning of January, actually. And so we've, we've come to chapter 20 this morning, um, almost as if we planned it to arrive uh, at Mary in, in, in the garden tomb. So John chapter 20, and we're reading verses 1 to 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And he bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came uh, along behind him and went straight into the tomb. And he saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. And the cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. And as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been one at the head and the other at the foot. And they asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they've put him. At this she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, please tell me where you've put him and I will get him. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned round, or she turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Amen. We know this to be true. Father, bless the reading of your word to us, we pray. Uh, speak your word to our souls by your spirit. Would you show us, Lord, this morning something that we've never seen before? And would you remind us of things that we might have long forgotten? Would you plant promises of hope in our heart in the way that only you can? In Christ's name, amen. Amen. So as I said, from the beginning of January, we've, we've been on this, this journey through the Gospel of John, and, and we said at the beginning of that study that it is a very uh, profound thought for us to think that the God of heaven, the God of heaven and earth, clothed himself in human flesh at Christmas and grew up and walked among us and that many people encountered him. They, they, they met him and spoke with him and he ministered to them. And they actually met the God of heaven and earth in the form of Jesus. And we said that some of these encounters have been written down for us, uh, for us to read and learn from. And so we did that. We, we, we've spent uh, a number of months looking at these encounters that people have had 
with Jesus. And, and some of them were John the Baptist and Andrew and Nathaniel, Nicodemus, a Samaritan woman, a, a man healed at the pool of Bethesda, a woman caught in adultery, a blind man who was healed, a grieving family. Last week, we, we, we looked at um, the crowd on Palm Sunday and how they encountered Jesus. And on Friday night, we considered a criminal on the cross beside him and how he encountered Jesus. And all these people met him uh, and encountered him and they had their lives changed as a result. But on Friday night, Jesus died. And Joseph of Arimathea, we read, along with Nicodemus, they took his lifeless body from the cross. And beside the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. And in that garden, there was a, a tomb in which no one had ever been buried. And they laid him there. And so it would be very natural for an Encounters with Jesus series to come to an end there on Friday night. No more Encounters with Jesus to be had. He's dead. But this is Easter Sunday. I was driving into uh, Junction 1 one day. It was just Beth and me in the car and I was distracted by some, something, and, and I walloped a curb really, really hard and burst the tire. Uh, and so I had to pull over and change the tire. I got the stuff out of the boot, and my wheels have what's called a lock and wheel nut. Uh, and so if you've ever tried to change a tire with a lock and wheel nut, there's a key that's only for your, your, your wheel, and it goes on to the nut, and then you have, to, you have to take it off with that. So I put my lock and wheel nut onto the bolt and pushed the tire iron, and the wee key split in half. I know. <laughs> so, so I'm stuck by the side of the road. The tires burst. The wee, the wee lock and wheel nut is broken. So what I did was I phoned. I went on to the phone and I said, tire shops near me. And I phoned at the, the closest tire shop and I explained the situation. I said, look, I'm a blown tire, but most crucially, the wee thing to get the lock and wheel nut is broken in half. And I'll never forget what he said to me on the phone. He says, I have no hope. <laughs> he said, you're in bother. Sorry, I can't help. He said, I have no hope. And I thought, well, this is the day for my heart attack then. <laughs> now, the first Easter Saturday might have seemed like a day without hope. Because disciples of Jesus were, were stricken with, with doubt, dreams were dashed, and hope was gone. And they felt like they, they, they've, they've basically they've staked their entire lives on something that might have been a mistake. See, one minute Jesus was, was alive and he was doing his, his, his work. He was doing things that they had never seen before or ever thought possible. He was speaking words that resonated in their hearts as truth. And then the next minute, they witnessed the horrors of Calvary. And they saw a lifeless corpse being taken from a cross and put in a tomb. And the fear was, that Jesus was not who he said he was. That his words were empty, his works were a trick, and we read in John's Gospel that the remaining disciples had locked themselves in a room, they were terrified of the Jews, and they were jumping for fear at every wee sound. So the first Easter Saturday must have felt like a hopeless day. And in this text this morning, we see the depths of hopelessness. And if you have it in front of you, uh, you, you can see in verse 1 we read, Mary Magdalene. Now, Stephen said it was Mary and Mary and Mary and others, but, but John only seems to focus on one Mary. Uh, and Mary goes to the tomb, and she sees the stone has been rolled away, and her immediate thought is robbers, not resurrection. 
grave robbers. Do you see that in, in verse 2? She says, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they've put him. And we need to remember that Jesus had taught plainly and clearly many, many times to his disciples that the Son of Man would be handed over and put to death and after three days be raised to life. But such is the depth of hopelessness such as the, the hopelessness of this day, that Mary has none of these words in her heart. And just seeing a stone rolled away sends Mary into despair. And I just, as an aside here, let me ask, might you have forgotten what Jesus has said? Are you in circumstances this morning that might cause you to forget the things that Jesus has said? Because that's more than possible. It's more than possible that despair might send us in the opposite direction rather than into the teachings and promises of Jesus that we know to be true. It's more than possible that we will only see with our eyes and forget the things that he has shown to our hearts. Are there promises that we need to keep alive in our hearts this morning? Mary arrives at the tomb and she finds the stone has been rolled away and in despair we see her in verse 11. She's standing outside the tomb and she's weeping in the darkness. And so the first Easter Saturday is filled with doubt and fear and pain and tears and hopelessness. But this is Easter Sunday. And we read that Mary uh, turns around and in verse 14, she sees Jesus. He's standing in, in the garden. But she doesn't realize it's Jesus. She thinks it's the gardener. And so she asks him, she says, Sir, if it's you, if, or if you're the one who's carried him away, would you tell me where he is and I'll get him? You might have heard of the four great refusals of recognition in religion. There's the refusal of Jews to recognize Christ as the Messiah. There's the refusal of Islam to recognize Christ as God. There's the refusal of Protestantism to recognize the Pope as Christ's priest on earth. And there's the refusal of Baptists to recognize each other in the off license. <laughs> I'm glad you laughed at that. I was nervous about saying that. <laughs> For some reason in this text, Mary doesn't recognize Jesus. He's standing beside her, but she thinks that he's the gardener. Now, why doesn't she recognize him. Well, maybe it's still too dark. Maybe the light's bad and she doesn't recognize him. Maybe she's blinded by her, her tears. Maybe Jesus is in a different form uh, to what he was. That's mentioned in some of the other Gospels. Regardless of the reason she doesn't recognize him, Mary, we have this picture here of Mary is in despair and Jesus is right beside her. Mary is drowning in hopelessness whilst hope literally stands beside her. But she doesn't see him. She doesn't recognize him. And this is Easter Sunday. And let me ask you, do you recognize the hope of this day? Do you recognize that Jesus is not in the tomb, but he's beside you? And he's saying your name. And he wants you to recognize him this morning. He wants you to recognize him as your hope. We handed out a little book uh, this year called Is Easter Unbelievable? I don't know if there's any copies still left. Hopefully you got a copy and you read it. In, in her introduction, Rebe Rebecca McLaughlin shares this quote that, that struck her that she read, and, and, and this quote tries to dispel the notion of 
happily ever after. And, and the quote is this, it says, reading stories is a gentle way for a child to encounter the hardest truth of life. There are no happy endings. And in, in her little book, she, she asks this question, well, whether we're religious or not, we're kind of primed to believe in happy endings. We, we, we kind of want the universe to have a, a good plan for us. And, and she asks in the book, is this just wishful thinking on our part? Well, the Apostle Paul, he, he wrote to the church in Corinth, uh, and he spelled out the worst if this is wishful thinking. This is what he writes to the church. He says, if Christ has not been raised, then all preaching is useless. And so is your faith. He says, if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you're still in your sins. And then he says, if Christ is only something to hope in while we live, then we of all people are most to be pitied. That's what Paul writes to the church. Now, what did he mean by that? Well, what he was saying was, if Mary was right in her despair, and she was right in her first instinct, she saw the stone rolled away, and it was robbers, not resurrection. Then nothing Jesus said was ever true. Without the resurrection, Christ is a corpse. Christianity is a fairy tale and a fool's errand. Without the resurrection, his death was just another execution. It did nothing for our sin. And without the resurrection, Paul says, we of all people are the most to be pitied because our hope is misplaced and useless. So if Mary was right about robbers, not resurrection, then there are no happy endings. And we will forever be in the sorrow of Easter Saturday. But this is Easter Sunday. We don't celebrate grave robber Sunday. We celebrate resurrection Sunday. We celebrate Easter Sunday because Paul says Christ has indeed risen from the dead. And I want to ask you this morning, can you recognize him? In the gloom of the morning of this garden and through the tears of her eyes, Mary hears Jesus say her name. Verse 16. Mary. Mary. And she knew, she recognized, maybe just the way he said her name, and all of a sudden the hopelessness of Saturday was gone. And in flooded the joy of Easter Sunday. Hope flooded her heart, and the light of a new day broke in. She encountered the risen Lord Jesus. And in verse 18, she goes to the others with her news. Her news. Not the news. Her news. I have seen the Lord. So encounters with Jesus continues even after his death. And folks, our hope is not in theology or doctrine or rhetoric or philosophy or wisdom. Our hope is not in religion or in the good works that we try and do. Our hope is not in a crucified man whose bones have long turned to dust. If that were so, we are the most pitiful and foolish people around this morning. Our hope is in Jesus Christ who died once to break the power of sin, who was buried in a borrowed tomb 
and who rose again into newness of life, who stands outside the tomb and says our name and wants us to recognize him this morning. Lo, Jesus meets us. He's risen from the tomb. Lovingly he greets us and scatters fear and gloom. Do you recognize him? Do you hear him? Because yesterday was Easter Saturday. But this is Easter Sunday. Let me pray. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Lord God, Christ is risen. We are alive. All your promises are true. Will you help us? Will you enable us to recognize you? And can we hear you say our name? May we encounter the risen Jesus today. O risen conquering son, yours is the glory. Your victory is endless. Death is defeated. Life is ours. Jesus be praised. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let's stand to sing, Thine be the glory. Now may the grace of the risen King Jesus, may the love and glory and mercy of God the Father 
and the resurrection power of the Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide with us both now and forevermore. Amen.